Hey booktube, this is Kelly. Thank you so much for watching my channel, Books I'm Not Reading. My channel is kind of on a little bit of a hiatus at the moment, um, so I'm not making videos as often as I uh, used to, but of course I'm still reading. So we're gonna do something a little bit different today and do three uh, reviews. The first one will be of Straight Man by Richard Russo then a uh, previously filmed uh, review of An Unnecessary Woman by Rabhib um, oh Alamendin, excuse me, my apologies on that, um, and then finally A Month in the Country by J.L. Carr. Now I won't be giving any spoilers away, so I hope you'll enjoy the whole video, but obviously if there's something you're particularly interested in, um, please feel free to fast forward to that video. So we'll start off with Straight Man by Richard Russo. Now, one of the things I guess I should say, and this is true for all three books, is that all of these books were books that um, my viewers, my subscribers, recommended to me in December of 2020. Um, I think I bought six or seven books and uh, so it's really important to me to get to those books this year. Um, so we'll start with we'll start with Straight Man by Richard Russo. This is my second Richard Russo book that I've read. Um, I've also read Empire Falls um, because it won the Pulitzer Prize for fiction. Straight Man is about um, a guy who's a uh, an interim head of an English department at a. Uh, I don't know if it's a community college or if it's like a satellite of a main, you know, if it's one of many branches of a, a big, a big university. But um, anyway, so he's the interim head of the English department. Uh, and, you know, I think that if anyone, I think if, if anyone had worked in that kind of environment, like an academic environment, um, that there would be so much more humor in this book. Um, I mean, there, don't get me wrong, like there's plenty of kind of crazy scenes. Um, the main character, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've already forgotten his name. William Henry Devereux Jr. Uh, yeah, William, he just gets into so much trouble and such predicaments and you know like you know at certain times he does stuff and you go oh that's gonna come back uh that's gonna come back on him but um yeah so i liked this book i just didn't love it but i do think there is an audience for this and i'm guessing um because when richard russo's first book um which is called mohawk was published in 1986. Um, he was actually teaching in the English department at Southern Illinois University, um, I think Carbondale. So, and he, and he has taught at other um, academic institutions as well um, in the past. So I am sure that writing this, um, you know, maybe there were things like that he wished he would have done. Definitely you can sympathize with this group of English teachers who, you know, every year they're waiting and waiting for a budget to try to figure out, you know, how many, how, how much staff can they have? Of course, people don't want to teach the comp classes, you know, those sorts of things. So it was, for me, it was more kind of zany humor rather than like laugh out loud kind of funny. Um, I'd also like to read Jane Smiley's Moo, which is uh, about a university, an academic environment at a university, but is not specific um, to an English department. And when I told Jason that it was really just about the English department, he was really interested. So I think he's going to read this at some point in the future. But um, anyway, so I liked it. I just, I just didn't quite love it. The next book I want to talk to you about is Rabi Alamendin. Uh, oh gosh, Rabi 
Ella Mendine's book, uh, An Unnecessary Woman. This was a great book in the sense that it really got me out of my comfort zone. Uh, it's about a 72 year old woman uh, living in Beirut uh, and you know all the history of that country that she's lived through and experienced and she is a book lover and I think a lot of people think well like this should be you know a, any anyone who loves books right should love this book uh, and <laughs> the, I I struggled I struggled with it um, I I don't think that I loved this book the way many people, especially on BookTube that I've seen, have loved. Um, I uh, I posted on Instagram the day that I was gonna finish this book, and I heard from uh, Shelly uh, swearing again, uh, and I'll link to her video about an unnecessary woman down below. So I waited till I finished the book, and then I watched Shelly's video, and I'm like, did we read the same book? Like, do like our because I I feel like Shelly and I have I mean you know I feel like there's probably some overlap in the in the books that we enjoy and like, but um she just gushed and raved about this book so I definitely want you guys to be able to see her perspective on it and there's a lot of people who commented who loved it and again I don't uh, I don't regret reading it because it was really good for me to kind of read something very different um, than I might normally pick up but I I just didn't connect with the character uh, the way so many people have and and I think part of it is that within the first 50 pages uh, of this novel something happens that I found just so disgusting um it's not i mean it's right before a sex scene but it's just really uh wow i i don't know why i don't know why the author included that i just really i was so grossed out by it and i and i know that sometimes i'm a bit of a prude about some things and so i i asked my husband i'm like what do you think about this and he was he also, uh, he also, he felt the same way that I did. Um, so I don't know if that really just set me off from the character, um, Ailea. I hope I'm saying her name right. Um, I don't know if, if that just dramatically altered how I felt about her after reading that scene. Um, the other thing that is interesting about this book, there's, there's so many books and, and authors who are mentioned in this novel. And I actually wish that the book would include a list of all of them, um, or that there'd be footnotes to what she's actually, that what the character, the main character is, uh, is quoting from. Uh, yeah, she has, I mean, I felt like she had a photographic memory uh, for the things that she, that she quoted from. But she uh, she really loves Fernando Pessoa, and again, I realize I'm just I'm just treading on all sorts of beloved things here because I know I've seen a lot of people haul um, or have on their bucket list of books uh, the Book of Disquiet by Fernando Pessoa, and I have read the Book of Disquiet, and I it is. It's just not, it's just not my thing. It's just, again, not my jam. I read it, but um, it was really just, I read words on a page, like there's, yeah. <laughs> so, so every time I see somebody haul that book or talk about that book, I'm just like, <laughs> and, and that, and that particular author is one of Ilya's uh, favorites. Um, so he is, he's referenced quite a bit in the book and it just, <laughs> anyway, I feel like the main character and I, if we did like a Venn diagram of, you know, two circles of, of the books that we love, there would be, there would be very, very little, uh, overlapping just based on the things that she references in here. There's a lot of things that she has read and, um, translated purely for hobby, purely for herself, um, that I've never read or I'm not familiar with. Um, she, she won't translate anything that was originally 
uh, written in English or in French because she feels like uh, people in Lebanon um, either they speak one or one or both of those languages. So they have they're she's essentially translating translations. So there's a lot of there's a lot of German authors, Italian authors, uh, Portuguese authors, and you know among many others. And she quotes you know um, she quotes from other people. You know she mentions Dickens at one point and um, some American American writers, but. Yeah, I, I just, I think that if I loved the books that this character loved, um, maybe I would I would have had a different experience. And I also just really wish that one little scene uh, I could have just been cut out. Uh, I don't doubt that uh, women have to go to extreme measures to, uh, to, uh, gain protection uh at times uh throughout history um but that scene was whew, yeah too, a little too much for me so okay on to the next review finally i'd like to talk to you today for just a few minutes about jl carr's a month in the country again want a book that um multiple people on my channel recommended to me and if you are about ready to switch off the video, I just want to say one thing. If you haven't bought this book, if you haven't read this book, you need to read this. It's tiny, so it's very tempting to try to read it all at once, um, but it's not that kind of a book. Um, a Month in the Country is about a uh, World War I veteran in England, and he is um, hired to help reveal a painting that had been painted over in a church. And this happened a lot in England. Um, you know, when we were switching back and forth between um, the Church of England and Catholicism and, and all those kinds of things, all the different transitions there. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of art that was that was covered up. Um, and so this, uh, this veteran uh, goes, and he still has some kind of effects of uh, shell shock. And it's this very tiny, um, tiny little town, uh, very rural England, very pastoral, uh, and and works at slowly uh, chipping away to try to get whatever's on top, the paint on top, or whitewash or whatever it is, um, to to slowly bit by bit. Um, pull things away and see the painting underneath. And like I said, it's short. I mean, I know many of you could read this very quickly. It is just a book of so much, there's so much kind of quiet and peace. And um, I just feel like it calls for, like the book is telling you read me slowly and <laughs> which I know that sounds crazy <laughs> um but I loved this book so much and I am so grateful to the many people who told me to get it um so again I I feel really really fortunate because I've read so many great books this year this is definitely gonna be probably in the top five, uh, I would say for the year, we'll see. Of course, there's there's still lots of time to read this year, but uh, yeah, I just absolutely loved it, and I highly, highly recommend it. So I hope you guys are able to uh, find a copy of this and pick it up. And like I said, just read it slowly. Um, anyway, all right, BookTube. 
Thank you so much for watching these little bite-sized reviews. If you've read any of these books, I'd love to hear what you think down in the comments section. I wanna thank all of the people who have recommended books to me, um, especially in 20, in December of 2020 when I bought, when I bought those books. Um, so thank you so much for your suggestions and you definitely got me out of my comfort zone a little bit and uh, yeah, I read some some things that I probably would never have picked up on my own and I'm so grateful, so grateful. So book two, remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.